longer exists as a great nation and financial powerhouse, but its religious roots are noted worldwide. As we will note in this episode, Old Babylon was founded on pride and arrogance. In the book of Revelation, we read that Babylon surfaces as the new Babylon. Although, in Revelation, she presents herself as a religious leader that requires the masses to bow down and worship her. Before we unravel this new Babylon, let's take a moment to listen to what Nebuchadnezzar says. Please welcome our actor, Patrick Lescarbu. In 586 BC, Israel's southern kingdom was destroyed, its people sent into exile in Assyria. From that point forward, one of the main purposes of the prophets was to encourage the Israelites, assuring them that they would one day return to Israel. I was the king of Babylon, an ancient city located near modern Baghdad, Iraq. The Assyrians had been the dominant power in the region until the Babylonians defeated them in 612 BC. 26 years later, we again defeated Judah and abducted all the people, <clears throat> relocated all the people to Babylon. Does this sound cruel to you? Essentially kidnapping an entire people group, taking them far from their homeland. We learned to do this from the Assyrians. When you remove a conquered people from their homelands and traditional cultures, it almost eliminates the chance of revolt. It's crowd control. When we conquered the Assyrians, we did to them what they taught us. And they uh, virtually ceased to exist. As the king who conquered Judah, I removed all valuable articles from the temple and placed them in the temple of my God, Marduk, the preeminent God over all gods. Uh, <clears throat> the dream. One night I had a very troubling dream. I called for my magicians, astrologers, all my men of wisdom. They, of course, asked to hear my dream, and then they would interpret it. Trickery. I shouted. They were trying to trick me. I commanded them to tell me what my dream was first, and then tell me what it meant. If they could not meet my demands, all of them would be executed. It quickly became apparent they could not meet my demands. No one can do this, they said. I commanded the mass execution of all the wise men in Babylon. My men came to arrest Daniel. Using his wisdom and brilliance, quite honestly, he somehow convinced them and me to give him a little more time to meet my requirements. Daniel went straight to his friends, straight into prayer to their God. That night, his God revealed the mysterious dream and its meaning to him. The next morning, Daniel came into my court. Can you tell me my dream and what it means? I demanded. Daniel did the strangest thing. He gave glory to his God and made sure that I knew his knowledge came from his God, not himself. He proceeded to tell me about my dream. There was a, a giant statue with a head of gold, chest of silver, belly and thighs of bronze, legs of iron and feet of iron and clay. He described a stone that destroyed the statue and then grew to be a mountain. Hearing the details of the dream reawakened all of my dread. I hadn't told a soul about the dream. His knowledge was divinely inspired by a powerful God, and I knew it. He, he then revealed that the gold head represented my government, and the other portions of the statue represented kingdoms that would follow me. 
I knew that his interpretation was true. I threw myself on the floor in front of him. I gave his God honor and glory. I immediately placed Daniel over all of Babylon and its wise men. I made his three friends administrators over the kingdom. My kingdom grew swiftly. I became the most powerful and wealthy man in the entire known world. Can you imagine a new movement rising? The title, Masculism. Fasten your seat belts. It is surfacing in culture quickly. However, this is not a movement you expect from the title. One might expect it to be a dogma of male supremacy. It is not. What is it? Since the mothers of our children dominate 76% of the workforce, males are rising to the occasion to be equal with the rights of motherhood and traditional roles of women, as in the case of stay-at-home fathers. Masculism is a growing movement to replace women in traditional roles. The ideological movement presses in on the socio-political ideations to eliminate sexism against men, equalizing their rights and abilities to replace women in the homes and standardized venues once managed by women. The movement grew out of the results of the successful global feminist movement. This means that since women have forsaken the role of caring for their children, men were forced to step up and do the caretaking of traditional functions of women. The bottom line is that the roles of women and men are nearly 100% reversed. While you think the average mother would be alarmed, they are not. Most consider it responsible for the generations of male dominance in the workplace. While biblical masculinity is on a slow rise, most men have defaulted to the power of the not-so-young feminist movement. Since the days of Adam and Eve, men have cowered to the strength of a woman. God gave women strength and power to train their children to grow strong in the Lord. The goddess movement took the front seat when this power shifted women to take over the responsibilities God gave men. Today, the goddess movement is the fastest growing religion in America. Unfortunately, the goddess movement is the religious modality used by the Antichrist to set up for his false prophet, who will lead the one world religion and economic forces. In the book of Revelation, God refers to this false prophet as a she. In fact, calls her the great whore or the mother of prostitutes. While most feminists, Christian feminists or womanists, don't associate themselves with the goddess movement, their efforts propagate this movement and their message. The goddess movement is also known as Wicca. Yes, it's true. Goddess spirituality, or the craft, appears to be the fastest growing religion in the world. Less than a generation ago, only a handful of Wiccans made their religion public, and most hid their craft behind closed doors, much like Satanists. Once the internet became an open forum to recruit and state their not-so-public beliefs, followers multiplied exponentially. With feminists seated in society as the leading cultural group, Wiccans can reinvent their post-feminist movement. The post-feminist term 
empowers feminists with the power needed for their newfound role in modern culture. They claim it is the next step for feminists. Christian or not? It's true. Men ruled the old Babylon. However, each king was managed by the female goddess of their age. History notes that this demonic method became Satan's first recorded ideology of feminism. It is also noted that this madness method set off generations of women returning to Eve's first act of superseding the leadership of Adam, submitting herself to a dominant gender-neutral god, Satan. After the Tower of Babel's infamous sin of attempting to disarm the holy god's governance through male leadership, Nimrod's wife slash mother rose to the occasion of claiming the position of mother of all goddesses. From that day forward, female dominance began populating worldwide. To keep it simple, the events surrounding Nimrod and his wife slash mother set Satan's plan to one day introduce his all-powerful great whore mentioned in Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. If you investigate the present culture, you should see how successful Satan has oppressed the world with such demonic thinking. In the rebirth of Babylon, Satan will have accomplished a global society that females will primarily lead. Fathers, husbands, or males in general will be enslaved to the feminist ways and views of culture, politics, and religions. Since God rules through male leadership, this demonic system begs for God to bring it to absolute destruction. The writer of Revelation writes, quote, Babylon has became a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. This passage tells us the system of the religious feminists will be likened to soothsayers and astrologers and magicians that Nebuchadnezzar himself made use of. Such will be the case of the new Babylon stated in the book of Revelation. New Babylon will be destroyed. Since this new Babylonian system will rule the masses through women, God is obligated to destroy Satan's methods of dominance. John, the writer of Book of Revelation, states this, For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Folks, it isn't hard to imagine the world promoting indoctrinations of self as God, openness to all forms of sexuality, and tolerance of differing beliefs that support a one-world mentality. Without this kind of depraved thinking, Satan would become impotent at ruling the world. Females are known for being less violent than men, at least before the shift into cancel culture. Once the male version of being a protector ended, men became more like women, and women are now demonstrating the aggression of males. To this day, we have never seen this kind of global functionality in world history. Understanding the scriptures teaches that God will destroy this deceptive movement. 
The new Babylon must be destroyed because of her infidelity, rudeness, lack of respect for maleness, arrogance, inhumanity, and refusal to adhere to the biblical model of womanhood. Since it is a theological doctrine that Satan cannot gain power through men alone, as in the case of Adam, Satan goes after the women of this world as he perpetrates Eve in the garden. Remember, Satan's game plan does not change. He is assured that what worked in the garden will work in modern culture. Once God destroys New Babylon, the religious and economic force of global governance, the masses will mourn. You can read that right out of Revelation chapter 18, verse 11. Satan's tribulation reign will begin to implode when she is plucked out of global powers. New Babylon is all around you. We are mandated by Jesus by these words. Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Revelations 18.4 Since we are not able to escape this culture physically, we can separate ourselves from the goddess spirit of this age. The best way to start is by refuting the feminist spirit of Jezebel in our daily beliefs. Stick to the ordained method of God leading the masses through male leadership. And more importantly, moms, get back to your homes. Train these children to be lovers of God, Jesus Christ, and the beliefs he faithfully imparted to his people. The matriarchal culture is now sweeping the globe like a plague of locusts. This movement sets the stage for the queen of the end times. It states this, for he, Jesus, has judged the great harlot who was corrupting the earth with her immorality. If you hear anyone who touts matriarchal spirituality, or governance, run quickly, hide, for there's a queen bee chasing you and her sting is to be feared. She will offer you her white magic in the first three and a half years of her reign, but in the second half, nothing but black magic. The trending goddess movement is nothing short of our enemy setting up for the first three and a half years of the seven-year reign of the Antichrist. Since Satan is a she-male, connect these ideological dots is easy. If we hear our Father's voice. Eschatology is easy for those who have ears to hear. Let all stop and listen, for the great I Am is speaking. Until next time,
In an age where Christianity is anything you make it, this preeminent darkness brings you, the reader, back to the basic doctrines of the Word of God. With the compelling research of Christ, culture, and Creator, I deliver a theologically sound analysis of each up-to-date movement that rises against the Holy Word of God. I will reveal how cancel culture, feminism, science, ambiguity, anti-authority, the millennial generation, even Gen Z, social justice, transgenderism, critical race theory, and many other cultural misnomers that rise against Christianity. I've been asked, so why this book? Honestly, I have found few books that address culture with the mindset of viewing the preeminence of Christ when considering culture and its movements. Today, the lion's share of publications tends to wash out the truth of viewing life through the mind of Christ, which, by the way, dwells within all authentic born-again believers. Secondly, most quality books I read on our topic don't finish with the introduction to the pure doctrines of real deal salvation in Christ. In other words, they don't close the deal, and more importantly, most ignore a worldview by the way of the mind of Christ. And it is my hope and prayer that you take time to read this eye-opening publication. 